friends. I'm Dr. Schultz. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? Okay, I should have had my camouflage pants on. Come on over here. Because today we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite herbs. I know I say that all the time, but this time I really mean it. Because this herb means something very, very personal to me. This herb is hawthorn. Often we refer to it as hawthorn or hawthorn berry. Uh, the Latin name is Crataegeus oxycantha is the species. But I want you to know there's a hundred, maybe more species of Crataegeus all over the planet. So all of them work really well. It's a woody shrub, you can see. It grows between, oh, it starts out small, a meter uh, or a yard, uh, but then it expands up to 15 feet. But if you let it continue, you can actually turn it into a tree. You can grow it 50 feet tall. Uh, I have many hawthorn around here that I trim back and use as a hedge uh, for the house. And then I have other ones that I let grow uh, into trees, into mature trees. Um, how do you identify it? Well, hawthorn, the shrub, uh, has green leaves. You can see it has quite unique green leaves, and you're going to see a close-up in a minute. Uh, it has white flowers uh, during the spring and summer, and red berries. They start out green like most berries, but then red berries uh, in the fall. And one of the parts that has been used traditionally uh, are the red berries. But nowadays, uh, uh, scientific research shows us that we can use the leaves and also the flowers. Virtually the leaves, the flowers, the berries, uh, all those parts are used today. Okay, where is it native? Well, it grows all over Europe, all over Asia, all over North America. And I don't know if anybody knows where it originated. Uh, people argue about that. Let's not get into herbal arguments. Um, but I see it used in those same areas. It was a huge part of traditional European medicine. Uh, it's a big part of Asian medicine for thousands and thousands of years. I've seen it in Mexico used to make uh, jams and the dried fruit is eaten. I've even seen it on special holidays. They fill pinatas with hawthorn berries before they break them. Uh, all over Asia, it's used in jams jellies, sodas, even alcoholic drinks, not that we're going to consume those. Um, and in, in Europe, of course, it was a big part of traditional European medicine since the first century. Mm, first century. 2,000 years and 6,000 years in Chinese medicine. So hawthorn berry's been around for a while, uh, and it's been used for medicine for a long time. Okay, how was hawthorn used throughout history? Well, I mentioned it's been used in traditional European medicine since the first century. That's about 2,000 years. And we're mainly going to talk about that because that's where our ancestors came from. Uh, most of our ancestors came from Europe, whether it was Great Britain and they were English, Irish, Scottish, or Welsh, or whether they were German or Eastern European or French or Spanish. Uh, they came from Europe or maybe Russia or Asia. They came from Asia. So we're going to really talk about the traditional European medicine because those were also the nature cure doctors and the herbalists that came to America that brought the knowledge of how to use this plant with them. But in the 1800s, there was a real resurgence of the use of Hawthorne throughout America and throughout Europe, and it was used in many ways, but mainly the berry was used. Uh, even Dr. Christopher, my great teacher, was taught by his great teacher, Dr. Knowles from the Dominion Herbal College in Canada, how to make a Hawthorne berry syrup that they used for all their heart patients. So it, in the 1800s, Hawthorne really flourished. Flourished. So when this usage was flourishing, what did they use it for? Well, everything to do with the heart, a cardiac tonic, a heart tonic. First of all, it was used for all cardiac arrhythmias, which is any type of irregular heartbeat. Uh, then it was used for angina pectoris, which is the pain or aching in your heart, the actual heartache that's caused by the heart not getting enough blood supply. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And you can have pains in your chest, pains in your back, down your arm, and in your jaw. It was also used for arterial sclerosis, 
uh, which is hardening or degenerating of the arteries because the uh, bioflavonoids and the flavonoids in Harthon uh, really heal heal the arteries themselves. It was used for congestive heart failure, which is when the heart just doesn't pump with enough force, like uh, other people would use digitalis. Many people use Hawthorne, much safer, and it doesn't accumulate in your body. So Hawthorne was the herb of choice. It makes that pump pump with more force. It was also used for hypertension or high blood pressure. So you name the heart problem, the circulatory problem, and Hawthorne was the herb that was used. Okay, friends, what is in this amazing herb that makes it the greatest heart herb on the planet? Well, one thing we know for sure is plenty of antioxidants. And of course, antioxidants are what protect the heart cells, protect the arteries, the artery lining. Uh, it's a great protector, but there's many more things. And as I said, uh, for thousands of years, just the berries were used, but nowadays science is noticing lots of those flavonoids and antioxidants in the leaf and the flower, and that's why we're using some leaf and flower in the tinctures today. Okay, today, I mean today, it's official drug in many countries of the world. It's an official drug in China, in Russia, uh, throughout Europe, in Switzerland, in Germany, even in Brazil. It's an official drug in the pharmacopias of these countries just today. Okay, here's a question. What's the number one cause of death in America, and probably the world, but the number one cause of death in America is heart attacks caused by the heart muscle itself not getting enough blood back to it so it can operate correctly. Uh, it's called coronary arteries, the heart arteries, coronary artery disease or coronary artery blockage. It's the number one cause of death in America. Chances are it's going to kill more than half of you watching this video. So what is Hawthorne good for? It increases blood flow through the coronary arteries to the heart. So I can't think of a better herb. This is why it's in my heart tonic and protect. We'll talk about that in a minute. I can't think of a better herb to use for all of Americans. Again, the number one cause of death is not getting enough blood to your heart, which causes angina, which causes heart attacks and the heart to die. And this herb increases the blood flow through the coronary arteries through the coronary arteries to the heart itself. Uh, that's amazing. It increases the oxygen that gets pumped to the heart. Another reason your heart doesn't work well is it's not getting enough oxygen because it's not getting enough blood. As far as the blood vessels, it actually dilates the blood vessels. It actually improves the blood flow itself, and it protects the blood vessels. How could you get better than that? Okay, let me tell you about a report a research program that was done in China about Hawthorne. Now, I want to let you know, for any of you people that love animals, as I do, this is a horrible thing. It should have never been done. Uh, for any of you animal rights activists, I'm behind you a thousand percent. This is horrible. I do not believe in animal research, but it was done, and I want to report it. And it's horrible torture, but listen to what I'm going to say, because many of you are going to have heart disease, and I want you to know what to do about it. Okay, they took healthy dogs and they put valves in their coronary arteries and they slowly turn these valves off to block the blood flow to the heart until the dogs had heart attacks and then they tried to revive them and they did that to dogs and they saw the massive damage that was done to the dogs hearts then they gave another group of dogs Hawthorne, a lot of Hawthorne tonic, Hawthorne berries, gave it to the dogs for a few weeks prior to this test. Then they did the same thing. They put the valve in the coronary arteries. They shut it off until they gave the dogs heart attacks, and they noticed two major differences in the dogs that had Hawthorne in their bloodstream. One is they were able to shut the flow of blood and oxygen off to the heart for a much greater amount of shut off and for a much longer period of time before the heart actually had a heart attack. So in other words, the heart was able to survive with a lot less blood and a lot less oxygen for a longer period of time. Then when the dogs finally had a heart attack and they turned the valves back on to give blood flow and oxygen back to the heart itself, there was no damage. There was no damage like there was with the dogs that didn't have the Hawthorne. So what does this mean? 
Well, it means that if you know anybody that has heart disease or blocked coronary arteries or any heart problem, Hawthorne is going to allow their heart to function normally on less blood flow and less oxygen. And if they do, unfortunately, have a heart attack and they survive, the heart won't have any damage to it. And this has been discovered that the chemicals in Hawthorne actually bind to, coat, and protect the heart cells. They actually bind, coat, and protect the heart cells so the heart cells can survive on less blood and oxygen and so they can survive longer and not be scarred or damaged. I can't think of a more amazing thing for the heart. Okay, so the two formula that I have Hawthorne in, the two major formula, are my heart tonic and my protect. It's in the heart tonic simply because any herb that's going to bind to each heart cell and protect it and let it survive and thrive on less blood and oxygen in case you have coronary artery disease and keep it from being scarred and damaged and the cells actually dying in case you have a heart attack. Well, that's got to be number one in the heart tonic along with cactus grandiflorus and motherwort and other herbs to make your heart pump stronger and also uh, to make your heart not have arrhythmias and beat in a regular fashion, along with cayenne and ginger to increase the circulation throughout your whole body. But it's also in my protect formula. And why? Because my protect formula is for anybody that's over 40, and it's to protect you from the number one and number two causes of death, which is heart disease and cancer. For the heart disease, of course, we're protecting your heart with the hawthorn. We're binding and coating those cells, making them stronger, making your heart stronger. And uh, the a second thing of the Protect formula is the uh, milk thistle, which binds and coats to the liver cells and keeps the liver cells from being uh, damaged and made sick and dying. So that's what the Protect does. Okay, but we got heart tonic, we got Protect, but what is the most powerful, powerful herb, the most powerful tool in the world beyond Hawthorne to protect your heart, to make you have a strong and healthy heart? And that number one herb, is love, my friends. You cannot have a healthy heart unless you learn how to give love and receive love every minute of every day. Okay, now a lot of people are really good about giving love, and some people are okay about receiving love, but how about giving love to yourself? You have to love yourself, and my friends, if you want to have the healthiest, strongest heart in the world, you need to start loving yourself today.